Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank each of you for joining with us for Sunday, Sunday School Bible Study, coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministry. We have a great and powerful lesson for today, the rooster crows, the rooster crows. And man, we are talking about uh, Peter denying Christ and, 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 and the uh, telltale sign of him being told when it was going to take place. Amen. Powerful lesson. We're going to get ready to move right into our lesson. Our aim, uh, today's aim facts is to examine how Jesus is tried by the high priest while Peter denies knowing him. And our lesson is coming from John 18 verses 15 to 27. Amen to 27. Amen. <clears throat> our uh, sections of our, we have three sections for our lesson for, to, for this lesson. And that's number one, Peter's first denial, John 18, verse 15 to 18. Number two, Jesus' first trial, verse 19 to 24. And Peter's further denial, number three, verses 25 to 27. Our related scriptures for this lesson, Matthew 26, verse 59 to 75, Mark 14, verse 55 to 72, Luke 22, verse 55 to 71, time 30 AD, place Jerusalem. Our golden text for this lesson is, Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Mark 14, verse 62. Our questions for this lesson to this week. Number one, which disciples followed Jesus after his arrest? Number two, how did those disciples gain interest to the high priest's house? Number three, who first challenged Peter about whether he was Jesus' disciple? Number four, who first questioned Jesus after his arrest? Number five, how did Jesus respond to the question about his teaching? <clears throat> Number six, why did the officer slap Jesus across the face? And number seven, who challenged Peter about Jesus the third time? Time. Amen. Powerful lesson we have for today. Before we get started, I want to ask if anything is said touches your heart, soul, or spirit, have any questions or comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, I am trying to set up an email uh, uh, where you can uh, get the answers to the questions, but I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm working on it, okay? Uh, but... Uh, Hang in there with me. Also, uh, if you would, go to the uh, email site that's uh, listed below, God's Hand at Work at Charlene's Outreach Ministry.com, and you can uh, uh, go to, the, to my uh, website, and you can give me your email address, and I will send you the answers to the questions. Amen? Until I can get the other set up. Uh, all right, we're going to get ready to move into our lesson, but first we're going to have prayer, then we're going to move right into the lesson. All right. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you that you are wonderful and great, God, and that you are our counsel. We thank you that you are God Almighty, and beside you there is none other. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in each of our life. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. Lord, we thank you that you are our everlasting Father and our Prince of Peace. We thank you for making a way out of no way. We thank you for holding us in the hollow care of your hand. Father, we thank you for all that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in our life. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Father. We ask you that you go with us and stand by us, Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we go in your word, Father, we thank you, and we ask that you'd open our eyes that we see and our ears that we hear, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we are proficient, doers of your word, and not just hearers only. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. As we stated, our lesson, the rooster crows, the rooster crows, speaking of Peter denying Jesus, coming from John 18, verses uh, 15 to 27. Amen. And the scripture lesson text read, 
And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out the other disciples, which was known unto the high priest, and speak unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the dasmo that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of the man's disciples? He said, I am not. And the servant and officer stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus, of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple where the, the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answers thou the high priest so? And Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Ananias had sent him bound unto unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Amen. This is a powerful and wonderful lesson as we look at this, how uh, uh, we can end up getting ourselves into so much trouble uh, uh, when we put our faith in ourselves. Because I do believe, Peter believed that he was able to withstand the, uh, uh, the, the questioning of anybody and to stand up for Jesus. But he was not. He, first of all, did not have uh, uh, the Holy Spirit residing in him. But the second thing was he put the, 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 the um, strength on himself and not asking God or asking Jesus Christ to be a, to uh, uh, give him to the strength to be able to do so. Amen. He just uh, uh, assumed that he had the power to do it. Amen. Wonderful lesson. As we look at this lesson, we see uh, verses 15 to 18, speaking of Peter's first denial. This reads, and Peter and Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did other disciples. That disciples was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciples, which was known unto the high priest, and speak unto the heard that kept the door and brought in Peter. Then said the dasma that kept the door unto Peter, Art thou art not thou also one of his this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servant and officer stood there who had made a fire coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Now you know, I wondered uh they said they believe it's possibly John. Some believe it's uh, someone else. Uh, but I wonder uh, if she thought uh, Peter was one of his disciples. Why did she not believe that the other person that uh, told her to give him, uh, give Peter entrance into the high priest's place uh, was one of his disciples? Uh, 
I, I've always wondered that if anybody else thought, you know, why did they not uh, question the one that was getting Peter access into the the area, uh, whether they were a disciple or not? You see, and so you, you, you I don't under, quite understand that in that aspect. I will always believe. I always believe if it was John, then uh, did they not believe that John was one of the disciples or whoever it was that got him access? Did that they not believe that he also may have been one of Jesus' disciples if they thought that uh, Peter was? Amen. But when uh, uh, when Jesus was seized in the garden, the disciple fled into the night. All of them fled, but true to his blood nature, through care, cautious, though cautiously, Peter followed afar off. He Peter said, "You know, I just I just got to see if what I can see, uh, you know, without getting myself caught." He said, "That is." at a distance to see what was going to happen. While he can <clears throat> while we cannot be certain, most think that the reference to the other disciple was to none other than the uh author of the gospel, the apostle John. Whether it was an unnamed disciple or John, he was known to the high priest. He had uh uh um Clout, as they would say, so he had pulled that he would be, was able to get him and Peter into the high peace priest area. Uh, the rest of the disciples truly had left; they was gone. They was too afraid to even attempt to get close to it. Amen. And so we do not know what the connection was, but it did make it possible for Peter to be granted access to the courtyard of his residence. It is likely that the high priest and possibly other members of his family reside in a near near in or near the temple's court. In the time of Christ, the entire temple complex covered about thirty six acres. So it was a good sized place and it could hold a lot of people. And 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 I was reading on this lesson what it was saying that uh uh the original priest did not lose the ability to be the head priest. This is why they was calling one a high priest, even though someone else had stepped in. Well, the Romans didn't go by that rule. They changed priests after so many years. But the Jewish custom was that the priest would remain a, the, the priest until they died. Amen. Peter was uh was not able to get in until John went out or whoever the, the disciple was went out and spoke to the woman who was uh the doorkeeper. Looking back, we wonder if it was a kindness of John to use his influence in this way. It is significant that Peter's first denial of the Lord was not before a powerful, terrifying soldier, but before a simple servant girl who kept the door. Well, now, I wouldn't really say I don't, I kind of disagree with that statement because I don't think it was just a plain, simple servant girl keeping the door uh, because I imagine she was somebody that could uh, fight off somebody that came to try to get in. So uh, I don't think they just had somebody, you know, the, the, the cook at the door, uh, 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 guarding the door. They had uh, a soldier of some type that she had some kind of strength to prevent somebody from coming in the door if she didn't want them to come in. Amen. Uh, so he denied that he was a disciple of Jesus. Well, yes, I can understand that. So anybody that was in position would have a uh, got Peter afraid because he knew that any of them could have turned him in and especially if they was a Roman person. Whether the person was a she or a he or whether they had clout or not, just being a Roman could turn them in. Amen. It's, it was only after the other disciples spoke to the woman who watched the gate to the courtyard that Peter was able to gain admission to the courtyard as as is still true, access to both people and places is often contingent on whom we know. And that is a fact. We even refer to these people as gatekeeper, uh, 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 
uh, standing in denial, John 18, 17 and 18, as the woman led Peter into the courtyard, she asked him if he too was not one of Jesus' disciples. Exactly why she suspected this about Peter is unclear. Why, and like I said, why did she not expect it about the one who got him access to come in? Amen. Perhaps she thought she recognized him from a previous encounter or she may have detected his Galilean accent. Our second portion of our lesson, Jesus' first trial, verses 19 to 24, the high priest questioned Jesus. Scripture lesson text read, the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Now Jesus is saying here, he's not trying to be smart or anything like that, but the thing is, you asking me, but we know that my word is not going to be taken as a uh, uh, something that you would depend on because I would have to have someone in agreement with what I'm saying. I, you, you will not take just my word according to the Jewish law. So with that being said, you need to ask the one that heard me. If they heard me what I said, let them tell you what I said and how I said it. Amen. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. Now the one that, that, that jumps up here and, and go to slapping on Jesus like he done lost his mind. That's my thoughts on it. Uh, 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 he had no understanding really of what was going on. He didn't know why Jesus answered in that particular way and he wasn't being smart. He was just being truthful about it. You could, They wasn't going to take his word for it. They are going to have to have somebody. He was going to have to have a witness of it. So get the witness then to come up and speak what he said and what he didn't say. Amen. And when he had uh, thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus in the palm of with the palm of his hand, saying, Answers thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of evil. But if well, why smitest me? Why did you hit me when I hadn't did nothing, when I ain't said nothing even out of order? You don't even understand what's, what's considered in order. That's the your problem. That's where I believe it. He didn't have the sense to know what was considered in order in order to stand up for what was right. Uh, now Ananias, verse 12, 24 has has sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest as we look at this, we see that Jesus' first hearing was before Ananias, the former high priest and father-in-law to Caiaphas, the current high priest, to the office of high priest was a life uh the office of high priest was a lifetime position and the Jews still considered it so despite the fact that its term was now set by the Roman authorities. And Ananias was still considered by many Jews as the lawful high priest, so that is undoubtedly why Jesus was brought before him first. Before things could move ahead, and Ananias would have to give the, his stamp of approval on the proceeding. And Ananias questioned Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine, since all rabbis and had disciples the high priest likely wanted to know where Jesus' followers were from the from and, and possibly why they had decided to follow him. He may also have wanted to know how many disciples Jesus had. You know, just a, a, a actually a reality line of question that nobody else even thought of. Uh, um, if you is... Uh, uh, Considered a king, and you and you are a rabbi, and you got followers. Where are the followers at? Let's hear what they are saying. Let's see what they're talking about. What type of followers do you have? Do you have warriors? Do you have just uh, everyday uh, people? What can, what you got? What do you have going on? This is what he was asking uh, uh, Jesus. These were the questions he was asking him. Amen. Our third section is Peter's further denial. Uh, verses 25 to 27. And the scripture lesson text read, And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. And they said, Therefore unto him, Art thou, art not thou also one of the disciples? He denied and said, I am not. One of the servants and the high priest, being 
his kinsman whose ear Peter had cut off said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again. And immediately the cock crew. Okay, we got somebody. We got an eyewitness here that saw Peter there. But Peter going to say, uh-uh. That was somebody that looked like me. That wasn't me. That's the way Peter was acting in this scenario. Amen. It said, the narrative now turns back to Simon Peter. In the cold of the early morning hours, he warmed himself by the fire. Doubtless his clothing and accent indicated that he was a Galilean fisherman or just a Galilean. This was the second time since Jesus' arrest that Peter had denied him publicly. Peter had pledged his loyalty to Jesus even if it meant his own death. He had jumped up there, cut the man ear off, ready to go to war. But now the table had turned. Denial 2 verse 25. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still warming himself at the fire along with some servants and soldiers. Someone asked him, Art thou art not thou also one of his disciples? And he had as he had done previously, Peter denied Jesus by asserting I am not. But when he was actually faced with owning his loyalty to Christ before those who could have him arrested and punished along with his master, his courage failed. This is where he fell off. When push come to shove, he lied to save his own skin. This is a humbling lesson for anyone who relies on his own self confidence in the Christian life. We cannot rely on our own strength, what we can and cannot do. We must rely, uh, put our faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. Paul warns us, let him that thinketh he standeth Take heed lest he fall. It is only through the grace and power of the Holy Spirit that we can persevere in our faithfulness to Christ. Resting, resting such, resisting such temptation is not easy. It's not something, you know, just to, to fly, fly by night because when people come up to you and, 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 they, and they step to you, you, you got to be prayed up and ready to stay in firm because other than that, if you're not, you will easily go the easy route out. Amen. But the but the Peter we see here is a stark contrast to the Peter we see in Acts 2, verse 14 to 40. He makes a complete turnaround. It's that after the Holy Spirit had come to dwell in the church and in the hearts of every believer. Peter was emboldened to stand. He then had the Holy Spirit residing in him. Denial, uh, denial thee. One of the servants standing near the fire the third time. He, he denied denial number three. One of the servants uh, uh, standing near the fire with Peter just happened to be related to Malchus, who had had his ear cut off by Peter. This servant had also been present in the garden when Jesus was arrested. But since it had been dark and there had been a large number of people there, he was apparently not completely certain that Peter was actually the one who had attacked Malachus. He nevertheless was suspicious, so he asked Peter pointedly, did not I see you they see thee in the garden with Jesus? Upon this third denial, the rooster immediately crowed. The said, Peter, you done did it the third time. You, you, you done did what Christ said you would do. When it came down to it, you would deny me. We want to make sure that we are ready to stand firm with the Lord. But we can only do that through strengthening ourselves 
in the Holy Spirit, allowing him to, to work through us and guide us and lead us. Amen. This is a powerful lesson. As we look at the, the principle of this lesson, we must recognize Christ's faithfulness in a situation where men were unfaithful. He was faithful even though all his men were not even able to be faithful to him. Amen. Our word of thought on this lesson is no one that night wanted to admit to knowing Jesus. None of them jumped up there and said they knew Jesus. Even the one that got Peter in the door, they don't seem to say who he was, let's know whether he admitted to knowing Jesus, including uh, one of his closest friends, a man he had called on to pray with him. Right before he was arrested, he had Peter and them out there, Peter, James, and John out there with him. When he right before he got ready to be arrested, knowing he was gonna be arrested, and he said, "You know, watch with me one hour while I go and pray, and you know that you yield not into temptation." He he, he was right there. He he was one of his homeboys. He took him to many of the uh, uh, places that only three them three went. Well, Peter, James, and John only the, the ones that went. The rest of the disciples uh, wasn't called to go there. The 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 the, the the raising the dead of the of the young girl and other areas that uh, only Peter James and John the Transfiguration that's where uh, 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 he was but uh, Peter was allowed to go but yet and still he was not uh, ready he said where do you stand I ask where do we stand are we trying to blend in or do we stand out are we able to stand out and stand up for Christ? Do we not allow ourselves to be strong in the time of need? We are, are we are strong when we need to say, I am a child of God. I am willing to pray for someone. I am willing to be uh, the mouthpiece of the Lord. Amen. How do we apply this in our life today? We're to always turn to Christ when others turn away, we must know that he is faithful when no one else is. We must know that he is faithful when no one else is. I pray you meditate on this great and powerful lesson. And y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you.